Hello and welcome to Berlin After Dark. This is your robot host, Mr. Happy. You know how everybody's freaking out about robots stealing our jobs? Lucky me, robots can't host talk shows, and you guys are stuck with me. I am your non-robot host, Stefan Van Quick, and this is Berlin After Dark. This episode, it's all about the future. Our anxieties, our fear, our desperation about just thinking about it. Media usually has a very pessimistic view of the future, but who knows? Maybe the space mission, the Mars rover one, might bring some good news talking about space missions. That usually means you have to send shit up into space. And that's kind of what my guest tonight does, Nahum. He's also what you would call a space artist, working on a series of space-related art projects, and he's also a hypnotist. Originally, we wanted him to hypnotize Dante into behaving like a chicken throughout the whole show. But apparently that's not how hypnosis works. So Bugs Bunny has been lying to us this whole time. But you don't have to go to space to find any innovation. My second guest, Immersive Arts, creates experiences where the audience can interact in a very active way with the artworks, creating immersive art experiences. And John Depp will be following up with some sick beats. So stay around as we think about the future and grow our collective anxieties. Better watch the space, we ain't out of space. Stay fly, cause we ain't got no bricks. Light beam it, might live stream it. You can see it on your planet. Usually behind the camera, take a step in front of it, just drop some magic life. A theory of subliminal rhythms within the prism. Out of space kaleidoscope, but that's dope. Rolling after dark, both eyes on the scope. Gravity, no. Immersive reality's got the subject lit, 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 lit. NASA said he's a space artist, and you're about to tune into it. What you think? I think, Alex, you better stick with your day job. Oh, wow, really? Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, I, I guess I cannot make a better introduction than that. So, my next guest, no. Hello. Thank you. Well, thanks a lot for coming, joining us tonight. Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure. Uh, so tell us a little bit. You are a space artist. Yes. Um, it happens that space can be also used as a perspective and as a medium to make work. It's been a, it's been a long journey and it's been a mess. I, I've done so many different things, um, from computer science to philosophy to music. I worked in theater for several years in London, and uh, now I do space. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was interesting. I was uh, working in this theater in London, which was underground in the, in the subterranean tunnels. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had a group of people working in art science and they would invite the scientists. So one day there were people from the Space Federation and they were blown away by oh. the work that we were doing. And they asked me, like, you should do this, but for our space. And I thought it, it was interesting to work on the ground and very, very over ground. Yeah, offering, as, as we spoke, perspectives. Exactly. Of different perspectives of what we usually see. Yeah, and what would you say are the, the main difference between the arts language and the science language then? Well, they, they have to prove something. Yeah. Uh, they are constrained to the scientific method, which is a very clear method. And, and art, it, it's actually, it can, we can allow ourselves not to be rational. You know, mm -hmm. That's poetic thinking. Okay. So we have different ways, but at the same time, it's, it's the, the very same uh, purpose. And uh, you studied s space. Uh, while you were working I, there, people started to push you, like, study this a little bit further. I, uh, well, I, was, in, I was invited to study mm -hmm. this program in the Space University. Uh, space University, yeah. that sounds cool. And uh, what's your relationship now with, with technology and art? Mm. I, 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 technology is one thing. I mean, I, I focus on the, on the mm -hmm. art nowadays rather than on making technological pieces mm -hmm. because, because 
I prefer to, I feel more comfortable speaking the language of arts. Uh, and if, I, if some pieces uh, require technology, then I collaborate with the experts, but I'm focusing more on the art. And uh, you're also a hypnotist. You know? Correct. And, uh, long story short, how does hypnosis work? Oof, because I, I know hypnosis from cartoons. Yeah. That's, that's my idea of hypnosis. That's, uh, I mean, hypnosis, I'm, I'm a skeptic. Mm. Like, uh, still, I keep this very scientific mind, so I don't believe easily in things. So I was very intrigued about hypnosis. I've seen it work and I've, al I've always wondered why that thing works. So uh, once, in, when I was still living in London, I decided to study it. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's see what, what's this about. And I found out that they were able to hypnotize me. <laughs> and I was able to do uh, things that I would not normally do okay. consciously. Uh, so I thought, okay, there's something very interesting. And then, and then I, there was a point where I was like, this, this could be used for art. It mm -hmm. has been used before for artistic purposes, but I had this idea of uh, hypnotizing someone, an audience, and once they're in a trance state, put inside their minds a false memory, mm -hmm. something that never, ever happened. Inception. Yeah, yeah. Inception. it's an inception. So after an hour of me, you know, yeah. like introducing the, the memory, they wake up and then I ask them, what do you remember? And the memory that I crafted is a memory about walking on the moon. Okay, like space it's, uh, suit and everything? Or, or yeah, or there's, like a, a, there's a lounge, uh, they, they get to experience okay. walking, they see earth rising. And it was, um, I started doing it because I was, I was, I was uh, upset that mm -hmm. when we went to the moon, back in, in the late 60s, there wasn't a single woman yeah. that walked on the moon. Every, everyone was like white guys. Uh, there were women that were ready to go to the moon, but they, they, they just didn't let them go. So I wanted to open up this experience and make a comment about mm -hmm. how everyone should have access to this experience. And I thought, well, Let's do it with hypnosis, yeah. and it's a, it's a wonderful performance. And uh, how, how did people react uh, to having this new memory? In, in so many ways, you know, like, I think so far I have hypnotized like 700 people, mm -hmm. and, and you see everything. You yeah. see um, there have been accidents, there have been people crying, mm. people that, instead of remembering it, they forget things in their heads. <laughs> To erase Which something instead of adding something. It's problematic <laughs> for me. Uh, as long uh, as there's nothing important. Yeah. I, I learned that instead of imposing many things in the memory, while I'm doing it, I, I'm asking questions. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? What are you seeing? So at the end of the day, there are 700 people that remember differently walking on the moon. Okay. And what's coming up next? What is what's this? coming up next? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on this concept of, of gravity and falling, uh, our perceptions of time, um, how we can hack our perceptions, a kind of critical magic. What if you could see things differently? I'm very interested in topics about feminism, colonialism, um, migrations. Yeah, what could be the implications of colonialism in space? You know? Exactly. Like that, that will be something that we have to deal with like in a hundred years. In, in yeah, in the first place, why are we using the word colonization yeah. when it comes to space? We, we've colonized. That didn't work last time. You and it didn't work that well. So, yeah. so what, what is that saying? Is it yeah. like just like our mental structures projected yeah. into space or we really mean it? So I'm, I'm challenging these things. Perfect. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing about yeah, that. Yeah, you will uh, know. Thanks for joining us in Berlin After Dark. This yeah, was thank you. For Berlin After Dark. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And now, live in Berlin after dark, John Depp and Jan.
was dreaming that my pa came up and handled a piano But when he spoke he had the voice of Anthony Fontano He's doing a backflip, no now it's a backstroke Oh now it's just a stroke so let me open up the aspirin But it's my aspiration to change my inclination And it's my foundation and a dirty joke Got holes in my shoes and I play games like bad dudes And when I meet a German named Herman I'm seeming like I'm very rude But it's apologies and words are a disease And it's Apollo on his knees and pollen season in the Appalachian Trail Apocalyptic nephew falling from the trees Hell, oh snap, it's a controller, and I ain't got a ticket An RV stacking heart attack is how I'm gonna kick it Sir, they call me Soggy Bottoms, because I always got them From dancing in the rain, enhancing all the pain I feel Please God, tell me love is for real Sometimes I want someone to cook me up a meal I'm sorry I'm sorry Fall in love about a thousand times a day And I can't make it go away Cause every single one of them stay And I probably got the diabetes No, I got the polio Should've ate my Wheaties Now I'm TP Cornholio Random apparatuses are having attachments Tarantulas, torrential habitats in a mansion I'm Marilyn Manson But you can call me Velveeta I don't even miss the days of needing a heater Hey yo, you met my auntie Rita Come on, I'ma go meet her Because she got better weed And probably feed us a pita I got attention deficit And a whole lot of debt, John when you gonna mow the fucking lawn? The voice in my head is clear. My name is John Dett, and I don't fuck with the John Deere. My crew is called 1518. We be dancing, and I just learned that they was really dudes up in Hanson. I'm slow like a tugboat. I always need a hug, so I lay around and curl up and cry on my umbros. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. care about these things so very much as I used to Except I'm very scary drinking dairy taking the doo-doo I'm lonely and I'm sad and even though I got a new dad Your place is very nice but still I wish I had two pads One to raise a puppy in with a partner who I love The other to write it Yo, this is my Michael Jackson club Got a brother from Bavaria I promised I'd take care of you But when this shit was serious Got sick like malaria I'm dyslexic and uncanny And I need to buy a fanny pack My eyeballs are two dope pimples in a cataract STDs and fragile bones, I can barely hold the microphone Macaulay Coke, except it's mentally, I'm home alone And I pretend to be your friend, except it's just another means to an end Oh, I be playing games like Nintendo, I'm sorry I'm sorry Seven burgers a week, my breath is heavy like a murder street. Connect the fibrillators to my chest, please. Surely my attention's weak and shock me back to life. Unclog the vestibule that I block. I'ma tell you about my problems without listening to y'alls. I'm a taker, so brace yourself. And when I sleep on your couch, you know I'm stealing them draws. My body's heating up like it's a hot air balloon. From all the parties holding schmucks who got the not rare tattoos. And now the coffee's heating up like a repeating cycle migraine. Hotties showing up like it's a defeating final eye strain. And Arby's makes up 75% of my DNA. Uh, I'm stark naked, hating menacing thighs. Fermented pastry size. Yo, so get your hands clapping, cause I got sleep apnea. Ain't nobody snoring louder than me, no dummy prouder than me Nobody eating quarter pounders of cheese, nobody getting rounder Call me powder cake, John dead on the counter eating rotten eggs And drinking milk out the carton, and chewing on the hardened skin Drinking out the garbage bin, chickens on the garden skin And missing Hardy's like a bottom bitch who missed her fucking pit And spitting out the shrimps, yuck this rim stuck, just a schmuck Scratching at the bed bugs is why the long mug Not very smug these days Been blasted with freeze rays Can't get past the tree phase For three days, I stay in bed I stay high in my underwear and plaid shirt Like it's 1995 In my defense, I never dropped the main line But the baseline grow like my waistline though It's hardly a brag bro I'm watching new kids on the block on YouTube Cause them and them and them is drag queens Not drag queens, don't get me wrong I think it's tight, it's what the flag brings It's the rainbow potatoes And I am not Play-Doh I'm more like Kato Kaelin and I'm covered in mayo I'm made out of cancer and butter and chocolate and Play-Doh But that don't mean I do not got a halo And if he dies, he dies, but I'm not Drago Yo, Lego my ego Sir, I'm just as old as Zuckerberg But I'm the Sugar Mountain I might be old and lucky turd A couple hookers, but who's counting? Count Chocula and Reese's Pieces It's like I am an extraterrestrial species Yo, a cartoon vampire, except I'm not sweet And the harpoon quagmire, depth who's got wheat And Steven Spielberg from Cincinnati, he 
screaming, me and Charlie Manson. An after party, kill the trees, playing mountain. Dodging taxes, Jerry Springer was the mayor. Even after when he went to jail for bouncing checks to a prostitute, I'm hungry for paella. Diet. So what do I eat? It's seven burgers a week. I smoke a thousand cigarettes and house in empty threats except a sweaty death. Yo, I'm thinking about suiciding it, but I don't want to be dying of shit. I'm drinking around, watching the prices right, and I'm hiding from everything rich except cake and my neighbors. I used to have ambition, who knew that was the price of admission And through my last transition stage, the future held a mission When I was of a younger age, buzzing from the hunger rage Hoping that getting on stage, opening my mental cage And maybe mend my bended ways, and end the days of being a stray cat with gray patches and scented sprays A vegetable with sweaty glaze, and it's forgettable she ever blazed Heaven to Betsy, again I'm feeling empty I'm hefty with a Pepsi, I'm dyslexic, not a lefty Uh, I wanted cars, and money, and power I started hard like a dummy and a coward And as the years devour, it's still the beer gets sour And Bill and Howard mix the fears with the downers And the pills and the powder, kick a rat in the gutter Put my hands in my pockets and shudder I'm a lock without a latch, a motorboat with detached rudders Cats and cows without the udders, bags of clubs without the putters It's a rapper with a stutter A pile of trash without a dumpster Yo, grumpy and stupid and covered in mold I'm lumpy, polluted and puncturing holes There breathes the man with the soul so dead That never once to himself, not even once he ever said Whose empty heart was never deep within his chest burned Like when he's home and you can hear his footsteps as he turns If such a sucker there be, better go and mark him well He's a dirty minstrel who be rapping rap just swell Low low his titles be, shame on his name And boundless his poverty, a wish he could claim Despite his quality of life and lack of power repels the wretch who always cuts Traded on itself, he stay alive And now he forfeit mediocre renown And they'll be dying, hell is frying, shall be going down To the pile of dust from whence homeboy once sprung Unwept, unhonored, and unsung Expecting you. I am Christine the PhD. Almost PhD. And while you have been out there partying, creating, living your crazy lifestyle, I was here thinking about what you should read this month. And I found something very interesting. Do you ever wonder what in a far, far future? when human species has long left the planet Earth, what aliens that would come here to look for what's left would actually find. They might find the Great Wall of China, they might find the Great Wall of Mexico, but I really, really, really hope they're gonna find this year. The beautiful poetry of Donald Trump. So, in this masterpiece, the American comedian and writer Rob Sears has undergone the crazy task of looking through everything, everything that Donald Trump has ever said or written or tweeted, and he hand selected beautiful pieces of language of that and crafted them into poems. And it comes with citations. Listen to this. We've got to stop the stupid by Donald Trump. You know what uranium is, right? It's a thing called nuclear weapons and other things like lots of things that are done with uranium, including some bad things. I have to explain to these people. They don't understand basic physics, basic mathematics, whatever you want to call it. I mean, they're like stupid. Stay humble, people. Technology offers very interesting opportunities for the art world. But while bigger institutions, such as museums, 
and art institutions are slower to adapt and innovate, curators and artists are way quicker into introducing new technologies into their daily practices. Uh, to talk a little bit about how technology can be used for the arts, uh, we have Immersive Arts uh, with uh, Jennifer Baxter and Marco Locatelli. How are you? Thank you so much for having <laughs> Thank us Thank you very here. much. You guys that knew, knew that this was going to happen <laughs> sooner or later. How did Immersive Arts uh, come to be? Um, so Immersive Arts is an organization um, which uses the digital medium, so certain things like virtual reality, augmented reality, sound sensing, um, all of these things in order to bring in the viewer and help them to participate into the creative process rather than passively consuming art. Um, this idea came about after much discussion between mm. Marco and I, and I was coming here to do a women's art exhibition. Um, so after that exhibition, which he helped me a lot, we kept in contact and we began talking about um, different ideas that we had, different concepts, and one of those concepts was about nature and technology intersecting. And we decided to make an exhibition out of it. Something completely different than what you were doing in the, yeah. the gallery. Yeah. That is like, pretty things on the wall, please don't touch it. Very exactly. Different. I think uh, at the beginning we, we connected on this idea that we had. Uh, when we see uh, participants coming to mm -hmm. uh, an exhibition and, and, um, and art events, they will always be... Uh, they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't yeah. know, you know, how to, you know, look at the art or if they could touch, uh, whatever. Um, they would go as much as take a selfie with it, and that's the maximum interaction yeah. exactly. that we had with that artwork. Very yeah. small interactions, and um, I think the idea of immersive mm -hmm. arts uh, starts exactly from this. Okay. So technology, it's a very important tool for us because I deal with all these interactions real, real time. Yeah. And so it was yeah. a very interesting tool for us to it, use. It's kind of like the technology becomes the, the connecting point between the art and, and the people. Exactly. Yeah. And um, it's you like know. the bridge. Mm -hmm. It allows yeah. it kind of breaks down all these boundaries between the venue, the, the curator, the artist and then the viewer. Yeah. We come together as one big family thanks to this tool called technology. Okay, and uh, so you guys started off with a nature in ben Binary, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about that exhibition. Um, yeah, this exhibition was super important for us because it kind of birthed this, um, our way of curating, which I think is kind of unique. We start very, very much with uh, weeks of talking about a concept and then we bring this concept to our artists and then we together figure out a way to translate this mm -hmm. into an interactive exhibition. Um, Nature and Binary in particular was about this concept of um, nature, the difference between nature and technology being that nature is ever evolving, right? Mm -hmm. You can go and look out at a tree, you look at the same tree tomorrow and there's something different happening versus technology is almost the opposite. It's yeah. like devolving, it's disintegrating, it's um, depreciating. And uh, after the habitat, uh, Monumenta came yes. along, right? Yes, Monumenta was yeah. monumental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you guys were showing up there. So in Monumenta, we were, um, was another important step because um, we decided to uh, develop this concept of uh, an interactive music performance, mm -hmm. an interactive concert. So the, um, the installation itself was uh, um, a room who was, uh, we used a projection mapping mm -hmm. to, uh, let's say, um, build uh, visuals all around the audience while uh, performance was happening. It was immersive. <laughs> it was immersive. <laughs> We really see a lot of potential with um, bridging the gap between the participants and the, the guests who are experiencing the music and the performer. Okay. So everyone feels as if they're contributing to this space and has really good energy. Um, so since we are working with a lot of people, there's uh, an emerging, emerging field called art space research. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much how it sounds. It's yeah. it sounds very <laughs> straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> But it's what artists already do, right? It's, yeah. it's researching the world around us, inquiry, self-inquiry, just using the art that, that we have at our disposal. So since we're working with a lot of people, a lot of artists, and they're, they're moving around the space, they're touching things, it's a really good um, ripe ground for research 
and uh, and, and innovations. This is good, it's a good uh, place to exchange ideas and see how we can start think, doing things a little bit different in the art world. Because, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I think uh, <coughs> paintings are so 1800. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I would like to thank you a lot for coming. Uh, thank, thank you very you much. much. Thank Immersive you so much. arts for Berlin After Dark. I must admit, this episode brought more questions than answers. But that's good. Questions, they take us out of our comfort zone. And when we leave our comfort zone, we innovate. And boy, do we need some innovation down here. As a united species, we'd accomplished amazing things. Agriculture, vaccines, cat videos. But those things were accomplished when we worked together and set our petty differences aside. Clearly, it's better to build bridges in space than walls on Earth. Berliners know a thing or two about walls. This was Berlin After Dark, and now you can go play outside in space.